And then this is another series. The Stedelijk Museum had a small other museum called Fodor for young artists. That was a different building, but it was related under the same direction as the Stedelijk. And they did a special catalog series uh, with typewritten. Uh, the interior of the, of the books is only type on the Take typewriter. Us, yes. That's why I used the enlarged typewriter on the cover. And this is a grid. You see the, you see the dots yes. here. That is the size of the typewriter okay. letter. And the type, this type is always exactly fitting in the, in the, the grid. In the grid. And that's yeah. what's on the inside also. My great grand uncle, he was one of the architects who did postal offices. Very expressionistic buildings in that period. Not modernist, but very expressionistic. And um, after the war, he died during the war in the German occupation. He was a, a prisoner and he died in the prisoner's camp. And after the war, the post office in his name made an aesthetic design department uh, to, uh, to follow the ideas of that man. And they always gave commission to young designers and for interiors, for all the printed matter of the post office. And then I got the commission in the beginning of the 70s to do a new corporate identity for the post office, together with Gerd Dumba, a colleague of mine. And so we did a lot of work for them. We created a whole new house style. And uh, that had a, a lot, all the ministries, for instance, in Holland, the various ministries, came to the post office to get advice for their corporate identity of the ministry. So a lot of governmental commissions went to designers. And I think that is the, that is the basic for the development of Dutch graphic design, especially graphic design, and also for industrial design, for furniture design. Architecture came more from the modernists from the 20s, the Van der Vlucht and, and Duyker and these great architects who had a lot of influence on young architects and Rietveld, for instance, who had, uh, in the, especially in the 60s and 70s, again, the influence of Rietveld was large in the universities for the building department. And uh, so that's come from two sides. And, and still, it has always influence in the young designer. A third uh, uh, direction is the schools. Yes. The schools, especially in the 70s, choose all the direction of experimentation. Mm -hmm. They gave a lot of freedom to the, to the students and say ex the experiment is very important. So they let, and, and the development of the personal attitudes was very important. That means that the teacher is beside the... the, the exactly. The, the, the they, they, they do not want to impose their ideas on the students, just but said they just guided them a little yeah. bit and say, well, it's, you have to invent yourself, you have to... Ad experiment with your own ideas and whatever is the result it doesn't matter as long as you develop and that is adopted in many of the art schools in Grand we have in Holland 14 art schools in that small country it's it's crazy but anyhow there are 14 art schools and and it started in the in the one from Enschede in the east of Holland and with a director who and that was soon spread out over all the academies and that was especially in the 70s and the beginning of the 80s. Now it's different again, you know, uh, but then just before the computer started, in the beginning of the computer period, that again had an enormous influence on the way of thinking of the younger designers. And so these things came together. And, and the last development of Droog Design, for instance, that is a, a, a association who gave commissions to very young designers to make concepts, only concepts. The concept idea was in the 90s, very great. And even if it's, it stayed a concept, it never came a real project. And they tried to bring it to the markets, the concepts. And that was a strong influence. I think it's now almost over, but still, it, 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 the last 10 years of draw design were very influential. Every, and I think that is altogether more or less what it is in the Dutch design scene, yeah. From 
the estate point of view, the Helvetica is much nicer. But uh, the, uh, the, and the readability is, it may be better. But, but the systematic approach of the universe was, from Frutiger was so fantastic. so fantastic. And I met Frutiger in that period for the first time and I was highly influenced. I tried to be functional, that's what I told you about the, 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 the work for the museum, try to be functional, but my aesthetic mind always, when I have to make a choice between readability and a, a little shift to make it a little more aesthetic than I often choose for the aesthetic side instead of for the readability. And that is always standing in the way. That's all. When you think you are a functionalist, you think you do something to make it readable, to make it uh, comprehensible for people, so that when they open a catalogue they, they can see what means certain ideas of text and why you did the typography like you did it. And then suddenly, while working, you think, well, if I do it a little more to the right, it's, it's, it looks better, but it, it's not better readable. Then I often choose for the, <laughs> for the aesthetics. And that's why I said I'm, I'm, I feel myself being a functionalist, a modernist, a functionalist, but aesthetics always stand in the way. And uh, what is your nature? You, you can't help. In the beginning, I had a lot of problems with it. I always had a lot of problems. I discussed this with Colin and said, well, why, why am I always going? But now uh, I let it go. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. A lot of young designers, when they come from art school, they, they have a problem either becoming artists I mean a, a fine artist, or becoming a designer. And the design fields works in commissions, and the artist is liberated on himself. And that's complete different attitudes. Uh, and mixing these two attitudes sometimes is, is, is a real problem. Uh, they don't feel happy on one hand, and they don't feel happy on the other hand. And then some of them just disappear because they can't stand these fights between the two things. So it has an advantage in the freedom of development, but it has a disadvantage if it comes to the final moment when you have to decide what are you, what, what direction you want to go. And that's what we see from a, young, a lot of young people who hardly can decide in what direction. Maybe future is, there is no dis distance between the two things. Maybe, because some of the directors of museums think that there is not a distance between the two things. Uh, like Franz Hax, who was a famous director in the, in the new museum in Groningen, where, that was built by, um, uh, by this uh, modern it Italian architect. And, and this director thought, it's all one. I don't mind whether it's typography, whether it's fashion, whether it's art, it's all one, it's all one movement, and he brought everything in the museum. And maybe it develops in that direction, maybe. Uh, I personally feel that there is a difference. One is always in commission, the other is always related to yourself, and there is quite a difference, quite a difference of approach. The same resources? You, you need the same tool from Lucy. You need the same tools, but, but yeah. in, in principle, finally it comes to something else. It's, uh, for me, it's a still divided thing. Uh, but I don't know in what direction but it will. You choose your side. I choose my side. I'm f I find myself on the on the restricted side. I can only work with the commission, yeah. and I cannot work free, free from myself. No, no. Such an alphabet is the only thing that I did from myself. But it's all highly related yeah. to the development of my of my profession. Yes, yeah. yes.